What is up, my viewers? Spang here, bringing you a replay submitted by Bondar007. It will be in his WZ-131, and it is going to be an assault battle on Erlenberg. His team is the defending team, and he is platooned up with one of his buddies, Mr. Dane, who is in the same platoon. I'm sorry, not platoon. Of course, they're in the same platoon, but what I meant to say is same clan as him driving his KV-4 in a barely tier 9 match. The enemy team's only tier 9s being an E75 and T30, and his team's tier 9s being an E75 and M103. I, would, I feel like that's a fairly even matchup for the most part. And the enemy team does have one more tier 8, but we'll see how big of an effect that has on this match. So, a quick disclaimer here. First of all, I just want to apologize for the unexpected hiatus on my channel, if you're curious on what happened with that. This should be the second video up since that has ended, and that will all be explained in a video, uh, an update video mid-February, so check that out. But getting right back to the match, it does look like Bondar here is going to just do his little scout tank thing. Perform that scout tank roll very effectively, go up behind this hill, staying behind the house to maintain some cover. And yes, if it seems like I know what I'm talking about, like it seems like I know what he's going to do, that is because this is take two. I had some technical difficulties with the first recording, so apologies. I like to go into these fresh and not knowing what to expect, but that unfortunately is not going to be the case this time just because of, again, recording difficulties. So just wanted to put that up front. Always want to be open and honest with you guys. But right now, Bondar doing a very good job of hiding behind this house for one to give him some cover. It is important to note there is no artillery in this match. That is always an important thing to take notice of in any match is how many artillery pieces there are as well as, you know, kind of how many TDs there are to know how many things are going to be lurking in the further back regions of the map ready to shoot you. Looks like an IS... U 152 that I, from what I could tell it did have the upgraded gun the BL 10 but that is always the assumption you want to make super Pershing excuse me moving his way up and trying to get a flank on Bondar's team here it looks like he does have the E75 sitting a bit further back and that is unfortunate because that is not the way you want to play that heavy tank in this matchup so the E75 is probably gonna miss out on some damage and kills and just overall performance because he's not fulfilling his role effectively. Pretty much a solid TD line here for the enemy, enemy team. A Yogg Tiger 88, a Yogg Panther 2, and an ISU 152 will be trying to hold up the line. That Tiger 2, speaking of people not playing their tanks appropriately, being pretty ballsy in something that has okay armor but not the best, and fighting a Yogg Panther 2 and an ISU 152 and a Yogg 88 just. Uh, he's asking for a world of hurt, and it looks like he might be backing off right now. In the meantime, on the Western Front, that 1-2 line getting pushed on kind of hard. Mr. Dane doing his best to hold the line, being the only thing of armor up in the front. Yes, the 110 is going to provide something of a secondary shield, but his armor isn't nearly as good as the KV-4s, while the M103... And yes, that has better armor than people expect, being a person who has driven it extensively. That is hanging possibly a bit too far back, especially being a tier 9. The E75 pushing on up with a KV-4, T30, and IS-3 in support, a T28 also on the flank in the buildings to on that side. While in the meantime, Bondar's E75 continues to hang back. Looks like Bondar wanting to kill this ISU-152, but he will not get the opportunity. Or maybe he will, pulling up forward, and yes, he does have the BL-10. He will get shot and then back right down immediately using his light tanks maneuverability to great effect. He is using the 85mm because of its superior accuracy on the move. In fact, he prefers it to the 100mm for this vehicle just so he can circle and shoot a lot more effectively. Seeing a flanking opportunity here on the Yogtiger 88, he will take it, not wanting to shoot that vehicle quite yet, wanting to get in closer and not draw attention to himself. Very wise play here. Auto aim coming into effect, getting a shot off and managing to very effectively get on this Yog 88's backside, who has all but consigned himself to death. So, putting up very little resistance there, knowing that he was all but dead, and then finally dying. Super Pershing in the city here. 589 hit points. Ooh, 228 knocked off of him. Will Bondar get a shot on him? I'm not quite sure. I don't remember this part of the replay. It's been a little bit. Took a short break here, but he will get a shot off. No damage on that first one. The Super Pershing turning to engage. Not him, but his Yogg Panther 2 ally. In fact, I haven't taken notice of whether or not he had six cents, and that isn't something I noticed in the previous attempted recording either. So, 
In either case, Bondar's team up by three vehicles, seven to four at this point, a comfortable lead, but that Western Front is in a pretty significant amount of danger. Not that it's anything his team can't handle. Eight to five, Mr. Dane getting the kill on the enemy E-75. A good solid kill for a KV-4, for sure. But unfortunately, he will now die to the T-28. So managing to do a little bit, I'm not quite sure how much he has done because one thing I haven't done yet is look at those post-game stats and without the mods running for Bondar here, I can't even tell how much damage he is actually doing. L quite literally, how much damage he's doing. But regardless, looks like the majority of Bondar's team is going mid to try and get a flank while Bondar using the superior mobility of his light tank to really come up and around and behind the Augmenter 2, taking the long route, uh, the long route. I combined road and route there for a second. Oh, and yes, he does have six cents. Noticing he's been spotted by that charioteer who has pretty much no armor. Bondar did switch to heat there for a little bit, but he has hent, uh, since switched back to AP. You know, heat for those armored German TDs. But the charioteer will miss, unfortunate for him, but very fortunate for Bonner, who now backs down behind the hill because he does not want to tangle with that quite at this moment, reprioritizing his target and aiming for the KV-4. He will get a solid shot on the backside of it. The charioteer kind of unsure where he should aim and not quite sure if Bonner is the biggest threat. Unfortunately, he is, but only getting a track in, Bonner getting the kill on that charioteer. So, looking like he wants to shoot the T-30 than the KV-4, but unfortunately, they're both going away as he's reloading and switching to heat rounds, getting behind cover with that hill. All that remains for the enemy team are those two vehicles, the T-30 and the KV-4. The T-30 just managing to get one last defiant kill on, there on the AMX-5100 before Bondar's team closes in on them. It's 13 to 9. It's all but over and the KV-4 losing some more of its hit points. Bonder trying to get in and possibly get kill number two here, but as we will see right here, unfortunately, instead of shooting him in the backside, he shoots him in the tracks with heat. Not really gonna rely on end, but he will get a kill one more time as he circles and shoots. The circle of doom is very real with this WC-131, especially with that 85 millimeter. The T-30 taking a shot and missing, and that's going to spell his demise, unfortunately. Bondar not getting the kill, but that will wrap it up for this match. And here we go, as per usual, Mastery Badge, Ace Tanker getting Spotter, Fire for Effect, and Bruiser. I, I forget what Spotter is, so... Spot an enemy vehicle, enabling your allies to cause 1,000 hit points of damage in one battle. That's the general, then there's all the little caveats there that really determine whether or not you actually earn it, but that's the general requirement. So, managing to get off quite a bit of damage on quite a few enemy vehicles, some quite larger than himself, and we do see he managed to get a significant amount of damage done. Mr. Day not doing too shabby for himself either in a tier 8. That's good reliable damage in a tier 8, I will say that much. And looking like the tier 8s for his team, really pulling their weight. The E-75 and 103, not so much. And on the enemy team, that charioteer doing a pretty good job as a second line TD. I mean, as it should be. It, it's, as we saw, it was paper armor. It was getting penetrated very easily by a scout tank with 159 penetrating rounds, standard armor piercing. So, yeah, not necessarily the most reliable. The enemy E-75 doing vastly better for himself, but the T-28 really being the other heavy mover. The ISU-152, that looks like two shots. Uh, yeah, two penetrations, three hits, four shots in total. So, Mr. Dane, I'm kind of curious. Yeah, damage blocked by armor over his hit points for sure i think no i can't recall if the kv4 got a buff to its hit points to make it higher than 1700 i know the kv5 has just a ridiculous amount of hit points for a tier 8 but i can't recall what the kv4s are from that match i wasn't paying that close of attention but kv4 on the enemy team not doing nearly as hot and then he had those zero damage performers unfortunately that is3 not being able to do much a t34 being quite poor in his performance and his team's ISU 152 not really doing a whole lot taking two shots and two both of them hitting but not penetrating kind of wondering if he had the BL10 or if he was using a 122 or something similar and a little tip to anyone driving an ISU 152 until you have the BL10 
152 millimeter cannon, I, rep I recommend you, you continue using, sorry, the 152 derp gun that you're using on the SU-152 because it will more reliably get you damage as opposed to those 122, 175 millimeter penetrating rounds. I, it's just, yes, it's good rate of fire, it's good TPM, but it's so hard to reliably get damage, especially against more armored things like KV-4s and E-75s with that dinky little 122, 175 penetration gun. Uh, I mean, that's how I drove it. And obviously, if you think you're skilled enough to use that rate of fire with lesser penetration and lesser reliable damage, absolutely go for it. But I just derped my way through the ISU 152 until I could get the BL-10. So that is my recommendation, but by no means the only way to do it. But little tangent aside, let's go to the detailed report. 22 shots fired, 19 of those hitting, but only 16 penetrating, such is the life of a scout tank. And the, the real important thing, though, is damage, over 3,000, so certainly pulling his team's weight, and more than his own weight, getting a total of, uh, well, he only got two kills, right? Yeah, he only got the two kills, the KV-4, and what was the other vehicle? I think it was the AUG-88, no, I believe a teammate killed that, hold on, we can actually, instead of, yeah, the Charioteer, so the AUG-88 was killed by an ally. Man, just goes to show you how rusty I am, how much a little hiatus can really mess you up, for sure. But, enemy vehicles damage destroyed 6 and 2, damage due to his assistance barely over a 1,000, so just by the skin of his teeth earning that spotter ribbon. Not that I think a lot of players place value on those ribbons, I think it's just a nice little thing to say, hey, look at, I help my team do these things. It's like affirmation that you were being valuable, not that he really needed that with the amount of damage he did. Kind of surprising he didn't get high caliber, but given some of the bullet sponges like the E75 and the KV-4, I guess shell sponges is the more accurate term. Uh, it can't, I guess he needed to get a little bit higher, probably closer to 4K damage to get high caliber. Unfortunate, but in the end, kind of irrelevant. He did earn credits even with firing some of those heat shells and would have earned significantly more with premium, as is usually the case. To put it into perspective with premium, he would have earned over 2,000 experience, but instead he earned just under 1,500. And again, always gonna be the case with standard versus premium. But anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button. If you wanna see more, subscribe. And if you've got anything you wanna share or suggest in relation to this video, my other videos, my channel, comment section below. And finally, if you have a replay you think I should do a commentary on, there are, uh, there are instructions in the description below, of course. As always, if I could stop tripping over my tongue, but Anyway, until next time, this has been Spang, and clearly I'm just oh so professional. MLG Dynamo!